live on YouTube again. Uh, welcome folks who are listening in on YouTube. This is the House Healthcare Committee uh, continuing our work on responding to a proposal from the administration and specifically from the Department of Public Safety to add mental health uh, staff or assistance to uh, law enforcement and more specifically, I think the through the Department of Public Safety for the Vermont State Police, but more broadly. Um, we've been taking testimony. Uh, we've heard from the Commissioner of Public Safety who's here with us today on Zoom, not as a witness, but as a resource should we uh, need to check in with him since the proposal is coming from DPS. Uh, we heard from the Commissioner of uh, Mental Health, Commissioner Sarah Squirrel, and uh, from a variety of witnesses, both from the designated agencies who are seen as an essential in the proposal or seen as an essential partner in um, moving this proposal forward. And we've heard from uh, a variety of stakeholders, including uh, those whose lives have been impacted by the mental health system in the past, as well as from those who are, some of whom are working in the mental health system in the designated agencies. So today's goal is Today's format is that of committee discussion. We do not intend to have witnesses. Uh, we've heard from witnesses over the past number of days. Uh, in order to help us, at the, end of, at the end of yesterday, we had a very brief opportunity for committee members to weigh in on some of the questions that are before us, uh, that testimony that has been brought before us. Uh, Representative Ann Donahue, the vice chair of our committee, has taken the lead in organizing our testimony. And uh, again today, uh, she and I have discussed this and she and I are going to together facilitate uh, our work as a committee through our committee discussion. We've learned, I've learned, and I think we've learned that it is often helpful to have something in front of us. Uh, we do not have a full proposal uh, written and developed, but. Uh, Based on some of the comments we heard in the testimony, uh, there's been some um, what are called, maybe called background principles uh, articulated uh, in part by Representative Donahue, but in consultation with Representative Houghton and myself. And uh, I think what I'd like to do at this point is to turn it over to Representative Donahue and uh, suggest that we could either open it up for, again, broad committee discussion to, to hear more thoughts. Uh, not everyone had a chance to offer them yesterday, um, but uh, and or we can move into some of the background principles that have been articulated. Um, uh, let me say before we, before we move forward, and I recognize uh, Commissioner Sherling here, there's some there's someone who has a lot of background noise, so it's a good mute. I'm not sure who that's where that's coming from. Thank you. I think that whatever it was that accomplished that. Thank you. Um, uh, I think one of the one of the key issues is uh, the funding is now proposed to come from the Department of Public Safety. Uh, in the placeholder language that we provided to this House Appropriations Committee, it suggests moving that those monies or directing those monies to the Department of Mental Health. And we acknowledge and recognize that that is a, a change and a significant change perhaps from what the Department of Public Safety proposed. Uh, at some point, we, this committee is going to need, and I think uh, has expressed some, some sentiment, but we're going to need to actually make a decision uh, as to whether our proposal uh, moves forward with monies uh, being uh, in the Department of Public Safety and then working toward an outcome or being directed to the Department of Mental Health or elsewhere. Um, and so I think that's, that's a kind of a fundamental question that uh, we need to resolve. And um, so maybe, maybe that's a place to start but um, I'm going to turn it over to Representative Donahue and uh, welcome you to use your judgment how to help us move forward in accomplishing an outcome which would be, uh, it's been suggested that the outcome if possible would be a substitute amendment 
for the House Appropriations Committee budget proposal to be offered on third reading. This has been done in consultation. I mean, this, is, this, this has been discussed in consultation with uh, the Speaker of the House. That was not our original intent, but it is now, uh, I, I think it is now the framework within which I'd like us to try to try to accomplish our work if possible. So with that, I can I turn it over to Representative Donahue. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I, I want to, uh, after I make just a couple of comments, I want to recognize uh, Representative Page because he's had his, his hand up. Um, but I'm sorry, um, I didn't that's a, pay attention sorry. to that. He's okay. saying it's okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think it might be helpful be, because what I tried to do, and as the chair and ranking member uh, went over it with me, is, is sort of identify the key issues that seem to have emerged in a series of these uh, background principles. Um, and after that kind of um, context, you know, the specific one at the end raises the question that you identified, uh, Mr. Chair. But, um, but I think it might be helpful to go through those. And from there, if there are missing things, that would kind of be the open discussion or, you know, uh, significant revisions and so forth. So um, I think that would make sense to move that way. But, uh, but Woody. Yes, I have some information that I think um, that I think I should share with you, and I hope you'll allow me to do so. Yesterday, at the end of the day, uh, I made some comments. Um, you know, I said I thought that uh, this proposal um, of having clinicians involved with the police is, was a quick fix, which would not really fix the problem. I said that I felt clinicians are not always the best trained or have the proper training. And I said, I think that we really need to look at restructuring or re-engineering our mental health system. And, I, and in retrospect, even though I shot my mouth off yesterday, I, I really don't think I was that far off the mark. Um, based upon some conversations that I've been having, um, we're, seeing, we're seeing that the mental health screenings are ineffective for individuals who suffer from mental illness particularly when local police are having to perform emergency, uh, perform and submit emergency warrants for screenings. And that's not their job. And it takes a lot of time for them to do that. That should be something coming from the mental health department. There needs to be more accountability by the mental health commissions and not just push it onto the police with their warrants that they have to perform. Mental health is failing with their screenings of individuals, of individuals suffering from mental illness. They should not be in the criminal justice system. I think we would all agree. And this is not just a problem in my district, but it's happening throughout Vermont. And from what I hear, the program located in St. Albans receives very high marks. Uh, that program um, that they have with the clinician is working not just at the state police barracks, but also St. Albans Police Department. And that clinician also goes out and follows up with uh, individuals that are suffering from mental illness. I feel the Department of Mental Health is failing our citizens. And if we don't have a crisis now, we're very close to having a crisis. And I would also like to add some more information. This came from, um, well, I'll just say it came from an individual source. He has a significant concern for his community of an individual that suffers from mental health issues. It's impossible to get assistance for this individual. Um, and he goes on to explain that this individual one day strangles a woman. He's charged with simple assault and disorderly conduct defense attorney requests a competency evaluation. The doctor completes a competency evaluation, but, not, but does not do anything to assist in determining whether that person is in need of treatment. The defendant repeatedly refuses any type of assistance or evaluation, refuses to comply with any voluntary treatment plan, 
Um, and therefore, uh, DMH will not assist the state's attorney's office with any aspect of the case because um, this defendant uh, will not voluntarily comply. The defendant repeatedly fails to appear in court, so his competency hearing takes months to happen. His failure to appear uh, COVID related. Court finds him not competent. And at this point, the doctor says, well, he did not evaluate him as to hospitalization needs, did not render an opinion. And the doctor further states his original report is stale and cannot be used for treatment needs. Defense attorney argues the defendant no longer needs to appear in court because the attendance at a hospitalization hearing is voluntary and the state has no authority or ability to have anyone evaluate the defendant for treatment needs or even require him to appear. Throughout this entire process, the state receives multiple emails from, community, from the community regarding the lack of services available to help this citizen. So if DMH is not involved in the process or the solution, um, um, let me see here. So if, if DMH is not involved in the problem or in the solution, why would you know, police officers or state's attorneys ever take the time or the money to try to get orders to help this individual um, get um, treatment? So this is just one case, but I bet it's very, I bet it's happening throughout the state. Maybe Mr. Maybe Secretary Shirling would like to but we're, we're, we're not taking any. We're, 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 okay. we're not going to go there, Woody. Yeah. Okay. okay, but but you see, but you I see do. where I'm, you see where I'm coming from, yeah. and I think yes. I think we have an issue. We have a problem. We do. So, yep, we do, and I think that's actually a very good um, intro to our mm -hmm. our broader principles of where we want to be going. I think the details of some of the court aspects, of course, are not details we're going into now. I can't help but mentioning that there's a bill on our wall <laughs> that was trying to, to look at that aspect, the, the warrant system, the, the court process, which I agree is very contorted right now and needs work. Um, but I think we all recognize how much work we need to address in the whole mental health system. Um, today, we're only focusing on that emergency response component, but, um, you know, in your opening comments were, I think, it, very much in line with what you said yesterday and what we've been talking about, um, and digging deeper is something we just have to keep front and center, but um, I think a lot of what you said goes straight to the number uh, two one on the list, and what you opened with goes to the number one, so maybe we can um, just start opening up that a little bit without going too far afield into all of the details of what work we do need to do um, on our community system. So and can I just you. say, Woody, what, yeah, say, say Woody, uh, I appreciate your taking the time to be in touch with people. You're sharing that information. My pushback when I said we're not going to go there, Woody, it was simply that we're not trying to have Commissioner Sherling become a witness again today on issues. I mean, we, we, could, we could spend the entire time on the issues that you've raised. They are very real issues. I and other members of the committee hear on a regular basis from constituents in our own areas and from across the state. Uh, and I think it goes to what Representative Donahue is saying and what's articulated uh, that it's a, it's a great frustration that we are, that we cannot fully address all of what we need to at, in this moment in time. Uh, but but what we can do is acknowledge and articulate what those broader needs are, and I think that's uh, that's part of what I've appreciated about and support personally that we articulate uh, some of those broader understandings of what the what the tremendous need is uh, around mental health services as a part of healthcare. Um, and so, um, so I just want to. Be clear, Woody. I was not trying to push back on saying, you know, you should not have brought that up. That's not the case at all. Uh, and I think, as Representative Don, as you said, it, it frankly um, simply sets further context for what we're what we're what we're faced with right now. So again, with that, uh, but I do think we have we must 
fortunately and unfortunately, we must focus our attentions on what we're able to achieve. As I said yesterday, I think, I think, and I think this language that Ian has helped craft, uh, I think we need to think in terms of staging our responses uh, that what, 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 what is it that we can do now? What is it that we can set in motion? What is it that we can put on the agenda for uh, this committee, whether all of us are back or any of us are back, that we should, we should say these are things that do need to be addressed. It's part of our jurisdiction as healthcare. And, uh, and then continue to, and, and to underscore where we made some commitments and where we made some changes along the way. Uh, this committee is, I think, consistent in our commitment uh, to these issues. And so I'll stop there. I'll turn it over to Ian. So I see uh, Representative Smith has a hand up. Is this, is this a, an overview comment or should we hold off and, and go it, through some of the principles? It's going right along with what uh, Woody has just been talking about. Okay, I, again, we, we don't wanna to get too far afield of what we have to get through today, but I, I think it's important to get the issues so on the table. What I wanna add will be brief, but uh, the people that we've spoken with about this feel that embedded workers that have been doing what they can now may not be as qualified and not well enough paid to be able to make the correct decision. Correct me if I'm wrong, Woody, but we need to make sure that more money can get appropriated into these uh, mental health service agencies and that the, the money gets channeled to the proper embedded worker so they can hire someone that's a little bit uh, a little bit more knowledgeable of what needs to be addressed in a situation. Am I correct in saying that, Woody? Yes, uh, partially, but I would go further and just say, Department of Mental Health needs to do their job and they can't continue. I was, I was being polite. And cannot rely on law enforcement to do it. Believe it or not, I was being polite. And I would suggest that they can't do their job if we don't give them the resources to do their job. That's exactly so I think right. That's where, that's where we come in as the legislature. So that's all I wanted. That, to that's that broader context. And I, I think it's yeah. exciting, frankly, and powerful that we, <clears throat> across a variety of political backgrounds, uh, share a common commitment around it. That's what I'm hearing anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think we, we can make that even stronger in the, the language as we talk about it in terms of the background and what we share with, uh, with approach. So, um, Mari, you have a preliminary comment? before we start looking at some of the concepts? You do. So it sounds like we're doing sort of values and principles comments right now. Well, that. yeah, I'd like to kind of work it in the framework rather than all over the place. So, I mean, that's what this, this document is about the principles and framework. So, um, but if it's something outside that, that you want to get on the table up front. Well, it's, Tell you what, I'll just tell you what it is. Yeah. Um, so I agree with um, most of what's already been said. I I also very much appreciate the work that the that Commissioner Sherling has done and the Department of Mental Health. Um, and I think that the data that they've given us actually, in my mind, um, because work is now involving uh, mental health professionals in a way it hasn't before. It proves to me that um, any mental health um, crisis services, the system should be led by mental health, not by um, Department of Public Safety. Um, I agree that this, we as a state have not provided enough financial support for a strong and responsive mental health system. Our committee has worked hard to change that, um, and I think we have another opportunity um, to keep doing that good work. I also think that um, in our, whether in a commentary, um, I know this is going to be a brief um, and to the point um, bill um, or policy, um, but I think that we we must require in statute that mental health system developments are led by the communities that know it best as clinicians, uh, mental health program leaders and people with lived experience, including um, an appointment 
requiring appointments made perhaps based on recommendations from the Human Rights Commission to ensure leadership from um, Black, Indigenous, people of color, LGBTQIA, people with disabilities, all of the um, usually marginalized and uh, in, uh, in proportionately impacted communities. So that's my 30,000 foot view comment. I think that's going to be very helpful to walk us right in because I think um, what everybody has just said um, are good things that we can use to augment um, in some of these different areas some of the, the um, framework that, that I, we're putting out on the table that those are all things that we can actually um, add to that framework to specifically say when we say this we need more money or, or so forth. So I, I think really the, the first two points on this um, framework um, is really- Can we really, put the document up? Yes, yeah, so why don't we put it up? Because the, the first two are really um, incorporate a lot of what we've been just talking about um, without as much detail on some of the subparts. but um, there may be ways that, I, and I'll take notes and Katie's here taking notes. Um, to incorporate some of that in what we communicate to our colleagues, uh, even if it's not language that actually goes into this very uh, focused short-term budget piece. So yeah, uh, there we go. So again, the, the first two are really a lot of what we've been talking in, in briefer form, but the first one uh, trying to start with that point that um, as we've been saying for a long time, underscoring that mental health is a part of healthcare, not the criminal justice system. Um, and emergency services do need to include public safety needs at times, but they have to be considered within the framework of um, the healthcare system and mental health uh, responses. And the second one, I'm just sort of taking them together because our conversation so far has been talking about those two points, that our current services just aren't adequate. Um, and there may be a lot of reasons that they're not adequate, but they're not adequate. Um, and that's the root cause of ending up with many of these emergencies. So there's a really pressing need for more robust community services um, to support mental health needs. And I think that's where there's some expansion in some of the comments about uh, what that means. And um, it may be important to reference that our entire, um, you know, that includes the needs for how we address uh, when the court system is, is intervening or is expected to intervene um, and the quality of the services delivered and the Department of Mental Health's responsibilities to ensure that those things are happening. So I think there's room um, in those for all of those points. Um, maybe what we should do is quickly, quick, briefly go through all of them yeah. because I'd like to go back and, and take the input and incorporate other things in one and two, but just so people know if you didn't get a chance to read it, what the later ones are, which get much more specific to the issue that we need to make some decisions on um, before we go back to the, the general ones. Um, so the third one really is trying to capture some of the conversation we had at the very end yesterday and some of the testimony um, about the fact that we've heard there are a number of different models for emergency responses. Um, they vary in locations, they vary in how they're funded. Um, and I think we heard actually a lot from the Commissioner of Mental Health right at the beginning and from the Commissioner of Public Safety in terms of some of their um, uh, revisions and uh, reforms in how uh, policing is, division, is um, developed. So this is acknowledging the need for a more cohesive framework, not something we can achieve in the current budget, but some of the aspects that needs to be more equitable around the state We've got different funding that's helping or not helping in different areas. Uh, needs to incorporate improved mechanisms of triage. 
including the role of the 911 system. We had conversation about that yesterday. Needs to include appropriate utilization of peer support. It should be developed by the Department of Mental Health, but it's gotta be in close coordination with people with lived experience of psychiatric disabilities, all branches of law enforcement, designated agencies and the hospital system. The balance of funding needs to be looked at. You know, where does Medicare and Medicaid play in? Uh, what's, what is the community uh, contribution that's happening in many places? What's the state contribution? And finally, can't, this can't be developed in our time frame for the budget, but this is ongoing work that we want to somehow see continue to move forward. So the next ones, I, I was reworking and consolidating some, particularly after uh, Bill and Lori uh, made some comments. So I'm sorry, it goes from three to five. It's don't don't ignore the numbers. Um, so the next one goes to, but but we we've got an immediate need, um, and the immediate need is to enhance that safe, appropriate crisis responses that can reduce when law enforcement is is drawn away and needs to be there if those supports aren't needed. Um, but when they are, that ensures really strong coordination. I think we've heard a lot that that's the critical aspect is that collaboration and coordination. Um, next, recognizing law enforcement is using a lot of resources responding to crises that draw them away from their core duties. And that's not what they're uh, best equipped or, or trained for. It's not an appropriate use um, when it's not necessary. Um, the framework for the immediate enhancement needs to be driven by the identification of the appropriate mental health services um, reflected through the resources and oversight uh, headed by the Department of Mental Health. That goes back to kind of our number one about um, it being a health system need, um, but then it also leads to that final decision point that the chair mentioned. Um, this is the issue. Uh, the money appropriation, which this language reflects or this principle reflects what we had in our um, placeholder language, that it's appropriated to the Department of Mental Health, but for the purposes of working with Department of Public Safety and the stakeholders to add to the frontline staff who are targeting those most immediate needs for mental health crisis. Um, again, as it says in number five, in support of uh, the law enforcement needs to be both supported and to be not be responding to things where they're not needed. Um, I think we can add some discussion at the end about what pieces need to potentially really be in the budget language to ensure that um, the principles that we are talking about are, are part of this. Um, and then we'll need some decisions on, um, presumably we want some report back at some point on how this is being implemented or put into place, and maybe also uh, some kind of a report back, you know, a year down the line, or uh, in, in order to bring back some of this. How how are we moving forward on what what both commissioners told us uh, they are working on as um, the systems are re envisioned? So um, let's go back to one and two, and I see we've got um, hands up. Um, I've got to figure out how we, uh, how I look at hands. Oh, I can do this. Good. You can both look at hands and look at the, um, the sheet. So trying to sort of keep it focused. Um, if we can look at number one and two and how we may want to change or bolster or expand those ideas um, as the background big picture pieces before going into the uh, crisis response. Um, let's start on that. I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna recognize uh, Representative Christensen next, just because she hasn't commented um, previously. And then uh, Brian Smith, I'm not not ignoring you. You're I know you're also uh, wanting to speak. So Anne Marie. Yes, I just have a question about the amount of the funding uh, at the bottom and. Uh, I thought we were talking about $2 million. Now it's like 500 and some half a million. That the uh, police were going to give us 2 million. Was I wrong? Totally wrong. Yes, that, 
that that's an yeah. that's an error. We've we've never changed the number. Um, it's the number that the DPS had uh, had uh, identified within their budget. This is this is within their budget through vacancy savings. It's it was not was never proposed as new money at any time. So um, this was a DPS uh, yeah. budget proposal for um, this amount of money for seven positions. Um, Brian, Smith. yeah, I understood. I just oh, thought I'm it was sorry. two million instead. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. Um, yep, Brian Smith. Can we jump to number six, Ann? Um, I think it probably well, we, would I, be more helpful if we kind of say, do we think this is the big picture of where things, where things should go before we get to the specific detail? Okay, saying, all right, this year, this money, how should this be handled? Does that make sense? Not to me. Uh, well, then go for it. Okay. Uh, could you, let me, let me see if I can, could you scroll down to six? Okay. Uh, this is probably going to be so, something that's too simple to do, but uh, $525,000, the Department of Mental Health, for the purpose of working with the Department of Public Safety to add frontline staff for immediate needs. Now, you're talking about hiring six people. Uh, seven, I think the budget allows for. If you hired six, you'd get someone a little bit more qualified to do the job with so, that $525,000. And if you want to get someone that's uh, like this line six says add frontline staff that will understand the immediate needs, you need to hire somebody for more than 45 or 50,000 bucks a year. So Brian, I think that may go to that we may not want to say this is for seven positions as opposed to saying this is for the need that's been identified and we want a decision making process between the Department of Mental Health and public safety and stakeholders as to how that works, which may mean not seven positions, but six at a higher level, but okay, leave good. that because we're not going to be able to sort that out, but but that may affect how we want to word this as in terms of discretion. Well, if they decide to spend the money and they don't spend it on qualified people, they're wasting the money. I hear you. Okay, that's all I wanted to add to it. Thank you, Ann. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, if we thank you. Scroll back to one and two. So. <clears throat> Any, any other discussion or thoughts about the, the first two, the real background? Um, Woody, you're how... talking, but you're on mute. Oh, me? Yes, I'm sorry to oh. jump along with Brian Smith to number six, um, but I have to add an item which he mentioned. In Sherling's report, he initially said that they want to expand the posi these positions within a three-year period. Is there any way that we can do it in a shorter period of time? Yeah, um, yes, uh, Woody, actually that was changed. Oh, already. okay, okay, yes. good, good, good. His, the first plan originally was over three years, but what they brought in, in the August budget was for moving all of it uh, this Next year. year. Well, those seven at this point, that amount. Yeah, I think that's important to recognize, Woody. That yes. that that change that that is a that is a change that the Department of Public Safety itself brought forward to say this this needs to happen more immediately, and that's what this proposal encompasses. So, does anybody else want to weigh in or thoughts about those first two? Um, I I think, you know, we we've, we've got some good input. I I think the the second one we can add some thoughts about it, it's, it's broader in terms of systemic, um, it's, it's the whole uh, court response elements. I, think I would support mentioning when we talk about, uh, I mean, uh, when we talk about public safety responses uh, that the press in number two, perhaps uh, the pressing need is for remote, more robust community services to support mental health needs as well as a more robust ability to respond uh, to the needs where it is appropriate of the criminal justice system broadly, including uh, the, including just broadly states attorneys, 
defender. I mean, I don't know if we want to list them all, but I would I would mention the courts. That's a good way. To, that's system. a good context for including that court. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that picks up on some of what Woody was particularly and with your specific example and an example which we've heard and we know we need to deal with more. Yeah. Katie, did you get that? I think that's a that's a great basic wording to work with on that, incorporating the broader. Okay, great. Um, okay, um, Representative say, Rogers. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, do I have a hand I can raise? <laughs> I don't think I do. I think you I can. To... I can go after Chair Lippert. You go ahead and then I'll just know that I, because I don't, because I, I think I'm a co-host or something and I don't get a hand to raise. So I'll just. Right, I, right. I'll, so I'll, was, was it Representative Rogers, Representative Lippert, and then Representative um, Houghton? Um, the, the majority of my thoughts I've been having and working through have to do specifically with the money. So I will hold them. I guess I just am, may, I think you may have said, um, and I just am, I'm struggling to kind of place in my mind right now. What is what is the end, like, location for this document that we're discussing? Right. I guess I'm feeling myself really pulled to work on the proposal in front of us that we need to have figured out in the next hour and twenty minutes. And so I'm trying to kind of place what the end vision is for this document and how to kind of how to weave that in. Thank you. I think that's an excellent point uh, because we really do need to keep on task. So the the I think the end point we're working on is that we have consensus on the background principles so that the leadership of the committee can take it and work with Katie on two pieces. One is the very brief amendment to the budget that articulates where this money is going this year and why. I mean, it's got to incorporate a, a little bit of our framework, but there there won't be the ability to have any lengthy language. And secondly, a document that's more like a memo to appropriations um, and really in some ways a memo, memo to our future selves. And to our colleagues, perhaps. And to our colleagues, right. It may, you know, in other words, verbally on the floor, um, what are the key bigger picture pieces behind this specific appropriation? Um, and I think, it also becomes background for, uh, you know, potentially a memo, a follow-up memo to uh, the commissioners involved, saying, you know, we we said in the in the budget that we think there needs to be uh, longer-term work. This is what we were talking about. So it's not going to be a formal um, budget language. And so you're right. We don't want to spend all our time wordsmithing um, something that's sort of. Uh, the general concepts that we agree on. And we really do need to get to, you know, number six um, with enough time to, to work it out. So I'll try to keep an eye on that time. Where did my, I don't have a, I don't have a clock. On my, oh, when the, when the uh, screen is up with a document, it blocks out my. Uh, you can hit <laughs> escape on it blocks your out my clock. Hit escape uh, on your keyboard, Anne, and it will bring it, it'll minimize it. Oh, yeah. Nice to uh, know. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, now I can see. Okay. So, a, a so tip, tip from Mari. <laughs> super. Um, and then I can see the hands better, too. All right. So, that it's a good reminder. We do need to sort of remember that this isn't wordsmithing for legislative language. It's our basic ideas, we need to get through them. Uh, you know, hopefully let's say in the next, um, be before uh, one so that we've got close to a full hour to work on the, the meat to talk about that. So, uh, Bill. No, I'm going, to, I'm going to step back from my comments, I think in order to help us move forward. Okay, Lori. And I don't know if this is the appropriate place for this, although I think it is a good uh, placeholder for the letter, you know, back to ourselves, reminding us what we want to do next year. But we seem to always leave out the school systems. And I, I'm thinking in my head about the conversation we had with Puck and how they were using police to come into the schools and get the kids. And the fact that there's also an uh, incredible amount of money being used with Success Beyond Six that we've not dived into. Um, so again, not sure it's here, but when you look at the whole system, I don't want to forget the schools. 
mm -hmm. the children. I think it is here. I, I think it's it's a reference under that number two. It's 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 the criminal justice system. <laughs> um, it's the schools. It's it's across, and I think that's worth including in that same reference. Um, Woody. Yes, I'm sorry about being a Johnny jump up here, but um, item one. Um, I don't know whether it needs to be incorporated, but you know, for mental health, again, ideally treatment should be like what we have for our, um, our other ailments with primary care. Um, it would be nice if mental health treatment could be done before it would ever get into uh, the court system or dealing with law enforcement. And I don't know as, as if we can put that in some way. Um, yeah, Woody, what, what we can put it right back. I, that's a line I was, I was trying, to, trying to, you know, shorten. I tend to be overly verbose. And, and that was a line I cut. We can put it right back in under number two. I, I opened by saying, you know, our healthcare system looks at wellness and preventive services first. And we're not doing that adequately in mental health. And then it went on to say, you know, failing to do that is the root cause of many emergencies. That can go right back in. <laughs> Put it back in, Anne. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Woody. <laughs> uh, OK. Um, uh, so I think some people didn't put their hands down unless they're wanting to speak again. Brian Chena. Yeah, I wanted to. I, I, I thought I. I thought earlier I heard someone mention, it might have been Mari, I can't remember now, and it might be that I'm just, it, it wasn't said today, mention getting the perspective of, of um, BIPOC, and I think Mari did say it, and I'm just wondering, like, is that, were, is, was the idea to fit it in where it talks about it being developed in close coordination with, is that where we were talking about fitting some language in there around that? Well, I think in terms of the, the the bigger creation of that framework for emergency responses, which is sort of in number three, I think yeah. we can spell out more. Yes, that's when it was talking about um, some of the people it needs to be in, co in, in coordination with. I think that can be added there to make it clear um, all of the stakeholders that need to be um, involved. Yeah, that, and that's why I'm asking. I just feel like it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't acknowledge that that um, in addition to um, the discrimination that might occur for people with disabilities, that um, systemic racism plays out sometimes in these emergency interactions, as well as um, homophobia. And I would even go so far as to say classism, to be honest with you, that there's issues where there's where class differences, people of different class get treated differently by emergency providers, not just the police, but by the emergency mental health system. And so if there's some way we can take that into account when we're making these improvements, it might go a long way to, to improving um, the way that our mental health system and public safety apparatus functions for people. So I, I just would advocate that we add some language in that, that that's a little more clear around looking at the different um, layers, um, the different sort of layers of identity and oppression that people experience. Well, I, I agree and support that. And, and it really uh, goes well into number three, both in terms of identifying some of the different voices that need to be part of the discussion, um, but also adding a line, um, you know, it, it's talking about needing a, a triage piece. It's talking about balance of funding. Um, it can add a line saying, and we need to recognize and include um, the different um, dis you had some good wording and I know Katie's here, but the different uh, systems of discrimination that um, are, are sort of additive factors, if you will, to the failure to have good responses in, in crises. Um, and I think, can I, can I just say that I think, again, we don't wanna conflate uh, being a, a person of color or a, LGBTQ with mental health issues, but what, what I think the key here is, and I think this is what Brian, I think what you're getting at is that when, when you combine 
when you, when you layer on, as you may, different, different types of marginalization, uh, it, it amplifies in a negative way. And that's maybe amplifies not the right word, but it, it, it creates more uh, difficulties, uh, both for the person who's presenting and more challenges for people recognizing how not to uh, misunderstand what's going on. Uh, and, and that certainly has, has been horribly historically true for different ones of these communities, both in healthcare broadly, uh, as we have heard for our witnesses and as some of us know, uh, historically, uh, there's just been the misunderstanding of what mental health issues are. Plays yes. right into our and, work and, and on health disparities. And even, in this, and even in this current period, these continue. Yes, and, uh, and and yes, exactly, Chair and 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 Vice Chair. What you said about disparities, I I was going to say that if we're talking about dealing with disparities, I think every chance we get to weave that into the work we're doing, the better. Absolutely. And and um and just to say that as a mental health crisis worker, sometimes we get called for a situation, and when you go in, you see that it's actually not a mental health crisis, that it's a housing crisis, or that it's a a domestic violence situation, or that someone there's racism, like someone's being accused of being quote unquote, and I say this, you know, sensitively crazy, you know, something's wrong with them when they're just having a reaction to racism or to some systemic barrier they're facing. And, and not all crisis workers have that awareness or training. And so, you know, I just think it's important if we're looking at improving the triage and the, and the dispatch and the, res uh, the emergency response that we're making sure that we're taking all those factors into account so that people aren't just labeled with having a mental illness when they're having a natural reaction to some form of oppression. Thank you. Might even be a reasonable reaction. Um, uh, Lucy, is your hand up again? It's up again, yeah. Um, yeah. I was just wondering if it might make sense to just make a separate, um, like a separate, Bullet. point and number number point and just say so kind of reiterate what we heard in testimony i, I knew there was a reason more. number four dropped off <laughs> <laughs> um but i i think just to reiterate the piece that you know this is somewhat about shifting the emergency response to a medical response away from a police response which is as it should be but an acknowledgement that that in and of itself does not do anything to it, well, it does not do anything to address the other disparities in the system, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so, so just just an acknowledgement that you know, we're just shifting the location of the racism or the other levels of disparity if we're not making that shift with that in the front and center of our mind. I don't know if I expressed that as well as it was expressed by our witness yesterday, but but just to to make an acknowledgement of that. Oh, I think that's exactly right. I think that Thank you, Lucy. makes sense. Um, Mari. So um, while we're talking about language, um, a, I agree that we need a, a very clear um, separate point um, about the impacted communities. And um, I feel strongly that instead of saying in collaboration with or in consultation with, um, we <clears throat> recognize that those people need to be leading. Um, and because we are addressing systemic change on um, so many levels, um, it needs to be led by the people who are um, experiencing the inequities from our current system. And um, well-intentioned folks um, tend to invite uh, impacted communities to the conversation or, um, you know, give them, I'm not going to call it a, a, a token place, but I think we need to be really clear that um, we are going to require that um, leaders in those communities are just that. They're going to lead, um, have a, a, str a strong and very clear leadership role in this process. Representative Tina, is your hand back up? I, no, I, I failed to, to I failed to okay. lower it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't mean to to be uh, critical of people wanting to speak again. I'm just trying to uh, 
clarify when I ask that. Um, okay, that that's great. I think we have some good framing for uh, for a number four there. Um, if we want to move to number five, that's really kind of the lead-in language for the for the uh, where we go with um, with the fundamental issue of the the appropriation. Um, so again, in, in terms of that background and lead-in, um, so that we can get to the the core um, appropriation, anybody have things to add or um, want out, uh, so forth, under number five, it's talking about what the immediate need is. It's recognizing the pressures, the inappropriate pressures on law enforcement. Um, and it's talking about the framework uh, it needs to be driven by mental health. Uh, and, and that's kind of the that's kind of the lead in statement for why why the money would go um, via the Department of Mental Health budget. So it, it brings us to beginning to discuss that issue as well. So any thoughts on that as as background and lead in to getting yes. to number six? Bill. Yeah, Bill? sorry. My, I, uh... I want to just say that I really appreciate the distinction you're making in the first sentence in number five, that I think it's uh, because I think there is a recognition that there are times when when there it, when safety issues are there and there needs to be core in there needs to be strong coordination where where public safety supports are necessary, but that the first part is like we need to reduce the involvement of law enforcement where there's really no need for that. And so I think you, you've, 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 I, I personally think that dichotomy is well stated there and, and I appreciate it. Uh, Representative Smith. Thank you once again. Uh, and I'm on number five this time, Han. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> I listened to uh, Ann Reynolds uh, the other day and very smart, smart lady, and uh, every, a lot of things she said uh, sunk in. One thing she did say that I didn't agree with when, when she started to discuss uh, uh, not being very excited about police involvement, uh, I got to thinking a little bit. So I spoke with some higher police officials this morning uh, about school resource officers. And school resource. So let me let let's let's not unless it's just a parallel, Brian. We we can't go off into that issue. No, no. Today. This is. I'm just saying that police resource officers do provide safe and appropriate crisis responses in the schools. And she didn't say it didn't sound to me like uh, Ms. Reynolds uh, agreed that police should be in schools. And there are cases where maybe they shouldn't, but uh, in this case, North Country High School resource officer was a very highly respected uh, officer and he he prevented problems that could have occurred on numerous occasions. So I think that goes along with the first sentence in number five and that's all I needed to say about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Representative Page. <clears throat> yes, I have a comment on line on item five line three, four, five, six. I do not care for the way um, that sentence is worded about law enforcement um, and they are not best equipped or trained for that level of response. Um, I know that a number of, I know that law enforcement are being trained on these issues. Um, I don't know as if I like the term, I would, I would probably remove <laughs> or trained for that level of response and just leave and they are not equipped for that level of response. I think that I think that would be fine. I think level of response is probably really not clear to what was trying to be conveyed here because it's more what what they were identifying as this this isn't our expertise, you know, mental health counseling doing that kind of thing isn't their role. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean cut, cutting that back um, I, I, just, I think makes sense. Well, you know, I'm just, they're not, they're it's not, not just me. If, if the rest of the committee agrees, that's fine. But I just, 
I think our law enforcement in general, you know, are being trained more and more on on mental health issues. And um, so, right. Just, what I'm I'm agreeing with you because what you're identifying as reading, that's that's not what it was intending to say. So I think it needs to be clearer what it's intending to say because this was intending to reflect what they were telling us about. You know, these these kind of responses are not what they're uh, equipped for. So. Okay. Yeah, I think I think they've been saying to us, this is not what we're trained to do. We're right. being asked to do things we're not trained to do. Yeah, and, and that's, we, that's and what, what we're doing. Is what we're, I think what we're doing, Woody, is layering on additional training because they have no choice but to respond at times. And we want them to have as much information and ability as possible. But this is not their core uh, training and mission. Okay. Okay, um, Lucy. I just don't understand what's meant by the last sentence. I was wondering if you could explain a little more. Uh, that simply, it doesn't, yeah. Uh, if, if the wording's not clear, we can work on it. That is simply uh, the transition statement from kind of the background into number six. It's saying, developing the enhancement that we're talking about, the fact that there's a need to enhance this should be driven by the, the expertise, if you will, of the Department of Mental Health because it's, an, it, it's about appropriate mental health support. So it's just meant to be lead into why we think that it's the resource, it, that it's the Department of Mental Health that should be heading up the issue, the, uh, um, heading up the initiative. So feedback on, on wording that better so that it's clearer would be great. I wonder, I guess I, I'm, yeah, I don't have any specific feedback. I just read it a few times and couldn't quite get it. Don't um, say that. It, it could be that everything from, um, uh, you know, it should be the middle part, identification of appropriate, maybe that needs to be left out. And it's just because it's really just talking about the framework for this should be through the Department of Mental Health. Okay, I just, the other, I guess the other piece I had with five, I know Lori also wanted to, Lori, did you want to jump in? Um, nope, the going. other piece I had with with five, which maybe is related, is I think it seems, and maybe this relates to six too, it seems like we're kind of drawing this dichotomy between situations that are, sorry, loud track, situations that are purely, um, that purely should be receiving entirely a medical mental health response versus situations that kind of exist in both the mental health and the public safety sphere. And then it seems like from there, we seem to further discuss situations that exist purely in the mental health sphere and not really that I can see further discuss situations that exist in both spheres. So I think it, it led me astray a little bit as far as just following our logic in, in point five. I think Got that's it. all. Yeah, no, I think it needs to be clearer that, that what it's trying to say is that you're exactly right about that. There, there's situations where it is really purely mental health that sometimes the police are contacted and drawn into first now and don't feel they're appropriate and we need appropriate services. But there are also those where there is the public safety element and they need to be involved, but they need to be involved in, in strong collaboration. And then it kind of leads to you know, because of the of the depth of mental health issues that we're recommending that it it that both those aspects be overseen and um, you know somebody's got to kind of lead it up and that the Department of Mental Health should be the one leading it up. That's that becomes the issue in number six. Okay, so is the sense? last of number five is what it's intended to convey that in situations where there is both. A mental health crisis and a threat to public safety that in those situations the response should be led by the department of mental health i i think it's saying that 
that the response that is developed, whatever that response is, which is not necessarily led by mental health, but right. the, the, the point place for coordinating identification, the details of implementing a program by putting, if we place the money in mental health, then it's the Department of Mental Health that's the, the point place for uh, bringing, the, bringing the players together, the Department of Public Safety and working it out. So that's what that's trying to say. I mean, that sentence isn't really needed. It's really reflected in number six. It's, it was really just a lead in to saying, um, it's got both these elements, but because the core is the health issue, it's the health side that needs to kind of be in charge of working with the Department of Public Safety on how those collaborations work when both parts are needed. But I think, I mean, this is very valuable because this is, again, this is background for sharing with our colleagues. And if it's not, if it's not clear and doesn't flow logically, then, then that, that has to be worked on. I guess I, I, I'm, if other people find it clear, that's fine, that's sufficient for me. I would probably opt to just take the sentence out, but I don't need to word, you know, wordsmith one thing here. Um, David, and then Lori, are you? Yeah, and then and then Lori. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to sort of pause and ask whether we're jumping ahead in number and assuming that the language in number six uh, expresses a sentiment that we all have decided is the way we want to go. And some of the comments that you've been making and some of the um, responses that you've been giving uh, sound to me like that's where we're headed. And I'm, I, I'm not sure that that's where we're headed or not. I, I, I'll say that I, I think that you can, we can all agree with the, the sentiments that are in one through five whether or not we think the language is 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 perfect, uh, without necessarily feeling that for this particular proposal, the best solution is to have the funding directed through uh, mental health. And, I, and I, sorry, so I just I just yeah. wanted to throw that out there because I, I'm not entirely certain that I have enough information even sitting here now to say that that's the case. I, I'm not saying that I don't but that I feel that that's not the way that it should be going. But I, I, I think this is important. Obviously, this is critical and we're covering an awful lot of ground in, in this and it will be great to have it laid out and that we've taken the time to do it now, I think is, is useful. But I, I, I'm just feeling a little bit hesitant about using it as justification now saying, oh, well, we, Obviously, we have to fund it through mental health because uh, I'm not sure that I would draw that that conclusion. Yeah, no, I, I I think you're exactly right. That's bridge language, and we haven't gotten to the other side of the bridge yet. So I, you know, I I think we should just strike that last sentence basically and go to the heart of what we need to be deciding on as a specific budget recommendation. So. Um, uh, Anne Marie wants to make a comment, but let's just assume that, that that's what we need to move now. And, and we're time wise, we, we would need to move there as well. So um, maybe we should just um, maybe we should just get to that key issue because then um, at the very end of our time. Sorry. Is somebody trying to say something? It was me. I'll be quiet. Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say we, we need to get to the to that crux of the matter because then we also may need some time at the end to identify if there's um, specific parameters we want to regardless of where the money goes if there's parameters we want to set on um, how it's used. So um, thank you, David. I think that's going to help get us 
on track to what we need to do in our remaining 45 minutes. Um, Anne-Marie. Are you trying to talk in your I guess my question is somewhat the same as David's and Lucy's. I totally, now maybe it's just my computer. Can you hear me? Never yep. mind. I'll call. No, can you, no, hear, can you me? hear me now? You're good. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with number six. Pretty much the way it is. Um, but I agree that it should be the Department of Mental Health. We get rid of the onerous thing of um, that they're not police employees. But in real life, I'm still not sure how this is all going to work. The call's still going to come to 911. There's no triage there. The, the police are going to have to answer it. Actually, go to work in practice. I. The um, but number six, I'm totally for that, but that's where I become nodded on. It's it's just a comment. Yeah, no, I think I think what we end up doing, I mean, we are turning it over to the Department of Mental Health and the Department of Public Safety, along with the key stakeholders, to to begin working that out, both short term and the the bigger issues around. The naughtier ones, as you say, around uh, triage and 911 and all of that. We're, we're not going to try to do any of that in this. Uh, Bill and then uh, Woody. Can I, can I suggest, because I think what David raised and okay, what I did. Good. I'm fine. Then. Somebody's okay. working it out. What, what David raised and what I had mentioned at the beginning, I think it's a pivotal issue. I think it's a foundational issue. Uh, and I think we ought to just engage that. And my thought was, We've had a lot of, we've heard a lot of witnesses, we've had a lot of discussion and we've heard some sentiment expressed by various committee members, but sometimes it moves forward, helps us move forward if we just say, let's do a straw poll. I mean, do, or, I mean, unless people need a lot more conversation and discussion and which is fine if we do, but if not, uh, I, I think sometimes just saying, okay, well, what's our, what's your, what, what is the, where does the sentiment lie within the committee right now? And sometimes it helps us to just say, okay, Put the money in Department of Mental Health, put the money in the Department of Public Safety, straw poll, and if you're equivocal about it, you can say that. But I think that might really help us move forward. Great. Uh, looks like you've got yeah. a bunch bunch of hands up in reaction to your comments. So let's okay. let let's hear from those and see if we're gonna uh, do a straw poll. Uh, Woody. Yes, I don't really have a problem with six. Um, I do think the money um, should be spelled out appropriately. Um, it may go to mental health, but it should be shared with the Department of Public Safety in, in, in dealing with these matters. Um, I have a comment regarding five and three. The last sentence on five, we talk about a framework for developing uh, the responses. And in the first sentence on three, we also talk about a need for comp cohesive framework. Um, in the past uh, testimony, there's been discussions of other communities that have done good work. I think Seattle was mentioned. Uh, maybe there are some others. Um, do we need to mention that perhaps they should look at other, uh, we shouldn't be reinventing the wheel. Um, what, has, what is working out there, we should perhaps um, you know, copy in some ways. Um, and I don't know whether that needs to be included, but those are my, my points. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Representative Chena. I just have a question about um, the process with this, like, because we've been working on this document and then I'm realizing like we're voting on the budget today. So we're, how does this fit into that process at this point? It, it be, uh, when our actual uh, language, kind of this number six aspect would be uh, an amendment on the floor Friday afternoon from this committee, uh, re changing our placeholder language into what we <clears throat> now discern, determine that we think uh, should, should happen. And um, what about all the rest of the language? How would that get 
incorporated into the process? That would be in a memo form that would be shared with appropriations that would be part of the floor presentation, though not language, and, and part of what we would be sharing uh, with the administration at, at, as well in terms of what our, in, our you know, deeper thinking and, and uh, messages. But it's not formal, it would not be formal language for any purpose. Which so is why we need like to move to the- of Oh, so Sorry. just to clarify that I'm understanding, it would be a memo of the committee's legislative intent that would go to appropriations to explain our amendment, which would be um, a shift in funding in the budget. Exactly, assuming we okay. decide on a shift of, in funding or if we just want to, whoever gets the funding, if we want to spell out more how the initiative gets developed. But yes, that's- Thank you. I, just, I want to- I want to acknowledge in the chat that Peter Reed's trying to speak and can't raise his hand just to call it oh. to your attention. Oh, thank you. Yeah, for, okay, right. Cause I don't have him seeing with the little hands and he hasn't spoken at all yet. So I, I'm going to go ahead and recognize him next and then go on with the little blue hands. Well, I, I'm, I'm listed as a co-host. So that's why I can't raise my hand. So uh, oh. I, I thought I was having a problem and then I realized that, but. No, uh, it's a very, it's a very tricky way of silencing people. Yes, I, really I had the same problem. <laughs> um, but it's okay, because I, I really didn't have any major comments till we got to number six. Um, but I, I uh, appreciate what David had to say on this point. And, I, and um, in looking through some of the, the written materials that we were provided, um, it strikes me that, that I mean, the Department of Public Safety clearly thinks this, that, that the original funding proposal is the correct one. Um, and from what we heard from Commissioner Squirrel, uh, she seems to agree as well that that's the right mechanism for the funding to flow through to the Department of Mental Health. So I'm, I'm a little cautious about uh, changing a, a funding mechanism that, that both departments involved uh, would not agree with. I'm sure it wouldn't be the first time that that's happened, but um, I just wanted to be cognizant of their, their viewpoint on this since they're the ones that will have to be implementing it. And it, it does seem like there is a mechanism for funds to, to flow uh, to the Department of Mental Health for the, to fund this. Uh, I am a little concerned about the comment about how uh, moving this would create a deficit in the Department of Public Safety. Um, but I think my main point is uh, is they they kind of would like to see it. Both groups would like to see it work this way. So I, I would not necessarily want to change it uh, willy nilly. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian China. That's a that that that's an artifact from my previous comment. I'll I'll lower my hand. Uh, Representative Rogers. Um, yeah, I just had all now that that what I had been wanting to ask about question six that to me I think is kind of pre straw poll discussion. So I think Anne Marie pretty much got to the crux of what what I've been thinking about, which is. The theory makes sense, but I really want to understand how this is going to work operationally in practice before saying this is the right move. And I think you know, Commissioner Sherling sent the memo, and and <laughs> and the and to Anne Marie's point as well, nine one one calls. As much as I think our testimony indicated that this maybe shouldn't always be the case, but they are going to be directed through emergency response in a public safety manner and just the actual, how is this going to work? Is the money that goes through DMH, does it get kind of swallowed into their whole budget? Is it set aside specifically for collaboration with law enforcement? And then I think um, just, I, I do want to understand a little bit more about the piece of a deficit in the DPS budget, which it didn't make total sense to me, but I want to understand if I'm missing something there. And then I think the the last piece just is, I, I guess I can I can leave it at that for now. I, I just seem, it seems like we're kind of missing, missing the full picture of what it is that we're actually proposing to do. Yep, thank you. Um, I, one thing that we may want to at least mentally go back to, we can't pull it on the screen at the same time is that um, placeholder language, which I think was a little clearer than the quick sentence in number six about the fact that the, the money would be specifically restricted to address this emergency response need. Um, 
to support and or reduce the need for law enforcement response. It's, it's, it's sort of who, who is in charge of developing how that specific short-term emergency piece um, plays out is, is the question. And it, in some ways the money flow is maybe a statement about um, the philosophical part um, more importantly than it is. And I mean, the, the money, the money I think we're gonna need to articulate is intended to go to those, the, the very direct frontline responses, positions that are um, intervening in a crisis so that it reduces the need for police or it's in collaboration with police when there is a need for law enforcement. Um, I'm talking too much, I'm sorry. Uh, Representative Smith. The, sorry, sorry, can Thank I? You. Oh, I'm sorry, you weren't finished. I apologize. No, that that's helpful. I think this is the last piece I was going to say that I kind of had lost my train of thought before. It was just the, the last piece was just that um, this the piece of having the two departments that are ready have the, you know, I know we're moving away from the term, but I think the term was used of embedded um, workers for, for, for mental health response. I guess it is just something too that to me, <laughs> I know we've talked a lot in this committee about how frustrating it is when we have all these pilot projects, which seem like such a good idea, but then what it ends up meaning is we have just different responses to everything in different parts of the state and kind of inequity of, of what our statewide values and responses are. And so I don't think that just because something exists means that it's the right answer, but I do see, you know, I, I think it's, it's a, it's nice to think that we would be able to come up with a model that would be statewide. And so I kind of am, am left wondering if, if what we're doing is keeping the two, I think it's two departments that have embedded, um, is it social workers or mental health workers or, or both? And if, you know, if the idea would be to keep yeah. those two departments that have this other response or, or how, that all fits together. And now I will, I yeah, think I've, that I've laid all my kind of questions out on the table. Right. And I think that's part of what's totally unclear. Um, how many, because they're, they're, they all are actually different models. Um, and then there are a bunch of others that play the same role, but aren't in the quote unquote embedded, or some are embedded in local police departments. So it is, I think that goes back to our, you know, number three that, you know, this, this has all got to be worked on. Um, but in the short term, it really becomes DPS and DMH who have to somehow um, identify which is the one to build on and enhance right in the short term. Um, uh, Representative Smith. Uh, I would, uh, I don't think this would be asking too much either. I would like to see the Department of Mental Health send a note or a notice back to the healthcare, house healthcare, as to exactly where the checks get written for this five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, and to what department it goes to. Uh, I'd like to see one of part of this money come to Orleans and Essex County. That's the reason I'm asking for this. Uh, I don't think that's asking too much either. I'd like some comments on that. Uh, no, I think we definitely want to report back. I don't think it's anything we can ask for in. <laughs> up front because we need them to do the work first. Um, I'm just on, afraid the money's gonna get filtered somewhere else where it hasn't been designated to go as in a lot of cases. No, I think we need the language to be very specific as to where we think it needs, where, Good. what. Um, Lori. So I'm, I'm basing what I'm about to say on what I know of the program here in Chittenden County for community outreach workers, which has three different streams of funding, Department of Mental Health, the local community, um, and until recently, uh, UVMMC, although I think it's changed a little bit. Um, and I, and I, I think we're getting, I think there's a message we need to send about the money and that it, it is for mental health and, and you know, I believe it should come from Department of Mental Health, but I also feel like we're getting hung up on that piece of it. And that, you know, within Chittenden County and the community outreach program, there is a clear directive of where the money needs to go. And if we're putting into words where the money needs to go, personally, that's my goal. 
and whether it comes from Department of Public mm -hmm. Safety right now because of the way the budget is done, I would love to see that change eventually, but, th but that's not going to happen right now. They have money that's earmarked for one thing that they're looking to earmark for something else. Um, I just I feel like if our language is strong enough and we put in the language that says how we want the follow up, let's let the people who know the understanding of the money figure out where it goes, where it comes from, where it goes. My comments. Okay. Uh, Representative Durfee. Sounds we're, like we're backing into kind of a straw poll, but it's it's bringing us to that anyway with yeah, background. We're, we're, that's what we need to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, I, I guess I, I sort of feel that uh, I, I'm not sure. And, and having read the letters from the commissioners uh, gives some, I guess, explanation for this. But um, why does it matter? It's sort of, I think a question for the committee is why does it matter which what the channel is for the funding? And uh, so we've gotten some response from the from Department of Health and from Public Safety uh, to help us answer that question. And, and then I guess we've we've also heard other perspectives that might suggest why it would be important for it to flow through the mental health system rather than public safety. But anyway, that's sort of, for me, the crux of the question, why does it matter? The, the other thought is that if we take the funding away from public safety, they're gonna be short, um, seven positions or what, whatever, whatever, however many positions vacancies they're not going to be able to fill. You just want to be sure that when there's a, when there's an emergency call, that there's somebody responding to it and, and that the money is, you know, we're, we're being specific enough and specific enough in saying this, it has to be sure that somebody's able to respond, uh, whether it's whoever it is. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Mari? People, please, re please remember to put your hands down so that I know if you want to speak again or if you're... Uh, okay. Oh, uh, uh, Mari, are you on or... Yes. You? Yes. yes. Okay. And then, and then Brian Chena. Okay. And Bill. And then Bill, sorry. And don't forget Peter, I think has been trying to wave again. Okay, you know what? I don't even get the, the faces. Do people still need the language up on the screen? Because if we take that down, then I can take see everybody's down. faces. Yep, okay. So I'm gonna, if, uh, Demis, if we could take that down now, that will help with not missing <laughs> waving hands. Okay, so Brian, Brian Chena is up. I think I was. Oh, I'm sorry, Mari, you were actually up and followed by Brian. Thank right. you. There's always a risk in taking your hand down too soon. <laughs> um, so uh, as far as the seven positions, um, we're still funding the same thing. If it goes through the Department of Mental Health, we're, we're funding however many positions um, they would be supporting for this particular work, whether it's the DPS or the Department of Mental Health. And uh, I, I recognize that we're hearing from um, agencies and um, I, I am very much uh, taking to heart and lifting up the voices of um, the other people that testified to this committee yesterday um, and if we are going to create systemic change, um, it is going to take many uh, complicated, small steps, some bigger, um, and we can't keep kicking the can down the road. So um, I will be supporting when we get to the straw poll part. Um, that the money be appropriated to the Department of Mental Health. Uh, Brian China. Yeah, I. I and then we'll, then Peter and then Bill. So I don't. Yeah, I, I um would also. It, it actually does matter to me where the money flows from. Um, from a policy lens, that if we're talking about providing mental health services, I really think that the funding should flow through the mental health 
um, the Department of Mental Health and the and the mental health system. And if the police uh, were willing to spend money that they were going to spend on officers, on mental health workers, then I don't understand why it's a problem to just transfer, to have that money flow through the mental health system if they're still gonna have access to those workers. And that we heard from many witnesses, and I don't wanna be too repetitive, but I, we've heard from many witnesses their concerns about um, in having mental health services provided through the police. And so I, I just, it does actually matter to me. Um, and I just think about the people who feel disenfranchised and scared of the police already. Um, all the people who won't even speak out because they're afraid um, you know, of, of, of the backlash they might face. And, um, and so I guess I would, I, it really does make a difference to me. And I would like to see the money going through the Department of Mental Health and to see um, close collaboration between the state police and mental health providers, but a very clear distinction in those services and um, all the way down to where the funding comes from. Thank you. Um, Peter, then Bill, and then I'm gonna give a- Okay, I, a, I a guess- Prelude the, to vote comment. My, my brief comment would be um, just the, the last line of, of the note we received from Commissioner Squirrel, which uh, says the provision of funding through DPS underscores DPS's commitment to the modernization of public safety, as well as significant buy-in on behalf of public safety. And, and I think that sends a good message as well. Um, so I, I, I understand that we want this to go as efficiently and directly into the mental health process, but um, I think there's a uh, and maybe it's a political story, but it, there's a story to tell there by running this through the Department of Public Safety. Bill. Uh, I, I'm re I would just have us remember that, uh, as I understand it, the, the intent is to actually contract with the DAs through the Department of Public Safety. And the DAs are principally uh, agencies in, uh, whose mission is uh, mental health and not public is not law enforcement. Uh, so I mean, perhaps that, that can be, can make the case for what Peter said or, 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 or the reverse. But I think, uh, I think we should also, I, I want us also to remember that our job is to set policy and the executive branch's job is to implement the policy set by the legislature. And sometimes we find ourselves uh, getting confused by that. And the uh, executive branch says, oh, we couldn't do that. We can't possibly do that. Uh, we, it's too hard or it'll be complicated or we'll have to do it. And I, from time, in fact, just earlier today, I had a conversation with someone from a different department of state government who said, well, we can't do that. The state law says, I said, we do statute, let's talk. And we talked about, okay, we can change that statute. And we have changed a lot of statutes recently in the COVID environment, uh, just notwithstanding laws and saying this must happen because we're in an emergency. So I just don't want us to get confused by that. Uh, and I would just suggest that uh, it's, I think it sends a message. I think in this particular point in time, I think there's a way in which I wanna really appreciate the Department of Public Safety because, and the Commissioner Sherling in moving forward with a modernization plan, but I do not want to, but I think it would be a terrible mistake that that modernization plan, when you suggest that there would be a chilling effect on future modernization or future innovation, I think, uh, I think quite the reverse. I think if the Department of Public Safety, if we were to move the money to the Department of Mental Health and the Department of Public Safety was able to find a way to embrace that, that would actually potentially enhance further innovation. And in fact, we can lead in that policy. I think it sends a message in this period of time uh, that mental health services belong in the Department of Mental Health. We want strong collaboration. We want law enforcement to be supported but the money should be redirected to the Department of Mental Health and they should be directed to figure out how to work that so that, I mean, if there's a deficit in one fund, come talk to us during budget adjustment. That, that's not a reason to not move forward on what I think is a really important initiative. And I, I applaud the Department of Safety, Public Safety for saying, let's do it in one year, not three years. Let's do it this way. Uh, we're asking them to take another step into the future. That's, that's, what, my, that's what my point of view would be. But I, but I, I, I but I, I, yeah, so I'll leave it there. So yeah, just um, 
speaking, not as coordinating, but but my thought on on the specific. I I mean, there, there's part of what David said that that's exactly right. Why does it matter on the front line part? It is going to be done through memorandums of understanding between the Department of Mental Health and the Department of Public Safety and the designated agency. Um, and that isn't going to change where the money flows, but I, I think it it does make a really important policy statement to say that it should be flowing and the person, the, the entity that coordinates, how are we going to actually put this into place as a, an implementation? People remember the um, Commissioner Sherling's um, memo talked about there needing to be a bunch of different implementation steps, policies developed and so forth. And so what this would be doing is saying the Department of Mental Health is the, is the lead agency on working with DPS and stakeholders in those implementation steps for money that's very specific to where we want it to be going. Um, and um, um, that memo and that proposal, the, the thing that concerned me about it first off in the very beginning was that it didn't include the key stakeholders. And I, I think that has to do with, it, with an organization that is not yet tuned into how essential it is uh, to talk to um, people with lived experience of, of mental illness and with having police responses. So I think that policy perspective um, is really is really important. So I, I that's why I support the Department of Mental Health being the the spot that coordinates and has the funding stream. Are you ready for a straw poll? Because I don't see I active hands. Mm -hmm. um, Back to you, Bill, you're the chair. I'm the, yeah, I am the chair. Um, so um, I wanna say, I, I, res I, I again, I, I spoke strongly and I'm not trying to tell people not to have a point of view that's different. So let me acknowledge that. But I do think uh, it would be helpful just, I think we need to make a decision. And, uh, and I think, um, so I would suggest that we do a straw poll by a show of our actual hands because blue hands get mixed up here. Uh, and I think that it's it, for it's it's a it's a dichotomy between directing the funding, having the funding continue to be directed by the Department of Public Safety, in collaboration and contractually with, but having them be the lead for the funding, uh, or asking them to actually to actually have the fund for us as the legislature to say the funding shall be in the Department of Mental Health and having them be the lead on the mental health aspect as it has to do with supporting law enforcement crisis intervention. Right, that, without changing the purpose. No, without changing the purpose and making sure that the money is in fact intact there and doesn't get swallowed up and used for something else, et cetera. So I, I guess I would then ask, um, um, for, I guess I'll say first a show of hands for those who would, because that's a proposal that we've talked, that's, those who would like to. Can so I'm not sure if everybody's able to be. Some people are not face right now. So the blue hand versus the face. I don't know how we. Okay, um, well we will pull the we will pull people just to yeah, make sure. Yeah, that's the way to do it. I think. Um, I, I mean, maybe we just start with saying, okay, the money is currently in the Department of Public Safety. Those who wish to have it continue to be in the public safety and have them take the lead, uh, a show of hands for that. Okay, and Anne-Marie and Lucy, do you wish to weigh in? Because we can't see your video. Oh, I see Anne-Marie has a hand up. Is that the hand up, Anne-Marie? What was the question again? By the man, question right man, now is- I'm going in and out. The question, bef the, the straw poll I'm asking us right now is first, those who would like the money to continue to be directed through the Department of Public Safety and and then the next question will be those who wish to have it be direct redirected through the Department of Mental Health as the primary 
uh, point. So again, those who would like to have it primarily, to have it stay in the Department of Public Safety, uh, show of hands and Lucy and Emery, you're gonna to have to indicate it with a blue hand or, or telling us somehow. Well, I don't see Emery or Lucy weighing in on this one. So let me say the reverse or the opposite, which is those who would like to have it redirected to the Department of Mental Health uh, rather than primarily through the Department of Public Safety, a show of hands. Okay. I'm raising um, my hand. And I see Lucy has a virtual hands. <laughs> okay, I think I think it's pretty clear. Uh, and and yes, and I think Amory raised a virtual hand as well. So I think I think that that moves us ahead on that decision. That uh, with respect for you know differing opinions here, and very and nuances of it. But uh, so I'll turn it back to you, Anne. Okay. Um, Anne Marie, is your hand up from that? But okay. So um. I think, what, I think what, can I, can I say, I think it was helpful to have people articulate their thinking on this too. Thank you. Yes, it was very helpful. Um, I think in our remaining time, what we probably want to do is is put together at least a target list for uh, when uh, Katie specifically drafts it. What are the key um, elements that we want to make sure are in the in the um, language to make sure the money uh, goes where we want it to go and the, dis, the um, decision-making process in it going there includes, includes how we want it decided or who's at the table. Um, to me, those are the two key things is, is articulating to what degree we want to be specific about where it goes and to what degree we want to be specific about who's involved in that decision. There might be other issues people want to bring up, but I think those are the, the two key things. Um, Brian? Yeah, I just have a question um, that in terms of the specific language of the amendment, what is going to be the number of the appropriation again? Because I know that the document we looked at said 525,000, but. Yeah, I believe, I believe that's the accurate number. It's the same one that's been from the start. So where, why am I remembering a $2 million number from somewhere? I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. Anne-Marie was also, and, and I don't yeah. know where that came from. I don't think that's ever been part of this discussion. I think it was a different There's bill. Some other things where we talked about millions yeah, of dollars. Yeah, different bill. <laughs> um, Mari? Uh, just repeat um, that I think we need really clear language about having uh, leadership from impacted communities, not just representation. Um, and one's thought would be to have um, a requirement that the Human Rights Commission um, recommend at least one representative um, to be working as a leader um, on how this, this program works. Somehow to include equity and re true leadership from the marginalized communities that are most affected by this work. So I'm gonna raise my hand on, on this one. Um, I think that my opinion is that goes to the, the further development of where things go and re reimagining the correct system. I think that for this immediate appropriation, this is a, a more rapid process and that a full, um, community-led process would not get us there quickly enough in terms of this interim step. So I, I think we need to say who the people are that need to be part of the decision, but I think um, a, a process of involvement of um, who, who's leading it and all of those things isn't, isn't um, I, don't, I don't personally don't think that that's possible to make this happen. Um, on the rapid scale that we want this interim step to happen. Um, that's, that's purely my personal thought. Peter? Well, I, I think in, in practical terms, it seems like the, the designated agencies are the ones that are actually hiring these people and then contracting with the Department of Mental Health or Department of Public Services, whichever way that, that ends up. But so let's say Department of Mental Health. So I, I'm wondering how 
uh, how much control in a sense you might have over that hiring process if it's dispersed among many DAs. So uh, maybe some, some guidelines on the type of person we're looking for, but again, then you have to find them. So I, I don't wanna create a process that, yeah, that takes six or nine months to actually get boots on the ground. Um, Lucy? I just reread the placeholder language and from my reading, I'm not sure it does clearly say in there that the intent is that this is for outreach specific to responding to 911 calls. And so I think if that is, I think that's kind of actually an important, in my mind, a really important policy distinction. And I think if the intent is that this money is for outreach specific to 911 calls, I think we should say that. Uh, is it is it intended to be exclusively to 911 calls? I don't think so. Not, well, I think it's right. I think it's emergency responses, which might or might not come in through 911. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think I've that ever is distinct that. as it that was is, in it's the, distinct from street outreach kind of things. I guess I'm just trying to understand if we're uh, if if there's a devi if there's a deviation that we're discussing or not from the way the money was originally proposed to be used through DPS, where it would be, I, I guess, I guess it would be emergency response, but not necessarily nine one one calls through DPS. Right. And I'm just wondering yeah. if we're expanding in our language the way that this money can be used, or if the intent is to keep it to the same scope that it would have been from the, my understanding was that the intent was to keep it to the same scope that it would have been in the DPS proposal, which like that, that was what my understanding was of what we were doing. And if I think that, if that is the intent, then I think it should be stated. I, it's my understanding that that was our intent for this okay. immediate first step in contrast to what needs to further develop. But, but that okay. doesn't mean we can't change that if other committee members want to see something broader, but my understanding is we were taking the, the the scope of the responses, the scope of the emergency response as per the DPS express need, which I think yeah. there's pretty, pretty big consensus that that is a need. The question is how it happens. Okay, thanks. Um, Woody. I, I just thought the scope was to expand the mental health outreach program to all the various agencies to include, you know, municipalities and all the stakeholders. Um, I think it's simple. Uh, a simple statement like that would be sufficient. Maybe I'm wrong. There isn't remotely enough money to do that. So. Um, David. Well, but I think, but I think Woody's point was, I think testimony we heard even from was that this would be working with the Vermont State Police, but also uh, responding to other law enforcement as well. Yes, that's the, I, that it was a very ambitious. Um, it was a very ambitious scope that they identified, but you're right. I, I mean, I think we need to stick with the scope that was identified. Yeah, I think and so. so and, and you're right, Woody, and it, the scope that they identified it was statewide, not just um, DPS. Uh, uh, Lucy, no, David, and then Lucy, is, are you wanting to be heard again? No, David. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, just, I guess, in response to, to Woody and then echoing Lucy's comments, I think that if, if, we, if there's a consensus that the intent was to direct the funding to emergency response, whether it's 911 or something else. And, you know, I, I don't know how many calls come in that are not through 911, but I, I think it would be, it would be uh, useful to get the language in there because otherwise I think it does leave it open to uh, the money being used for, for perfectly you know, legitimate and, and needed reasons, but, uh, but taking away from an emergency response need that no no one has said isn't there. No one has said that we don't need funding because there aren't we're not anticipating as many emergency response calls. Yeah. 
good, good point. Thank you. Other thoughts? Um, Can I suggest Peter, that Peter? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a quick comment that that is potentially could we add something in terms of direction that this this should really the fund should be directed at actually hiring people that will be doing this work and not getting swallowed up in administration and bureaucracy uh, something along those lines. That, and and that's part that's part of <laughs> yeah part, that's part of saying it's 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 the scope of what DPS was proposing that we want to right support yeah. Um, Bill? Well, I, again, this is aspirational and it can't necessarily be achieved broadly, but uh, that, some prior, that some recognition and priority be given to uh, individuals who also have a lived experience uh, as having been impacted by uh, the mental health and the law enforcement system. That if we have two you know, I, and I don't know where you run into the legalities here, but uh, but that that's a that's that's a perspective that if you can bring it into this, that would be, you know, that would be a, an enhancement that I think would be quite valuable. Yeah, I I agree. I, I think that we I think you know we can talk with Katie, but I think um, indicating that um, I mean I don't think that we can be proposing that that it not work through the DA system right now, for example, at, at, oh, in this. I think that's an assumption. But, but um, the statement that, that DAs should prioritize hiring qualified peers to fill those roles is something that we can probably articulate. Yeah. When, when they are qualified. For, to they're otherwise those. qualified as well. Yeah. Anyone else? So the one other piece, and we, and I'm not saying we can't go back as people think about more of those details, but um, right now the placeholder language says, report back on how you're doing with this by November 1st. That's a status report. It's not a final what your plan is, but that's what it says right now. Um, and so that's one question. And the second question is, do we want to say something about tell us how you're doing on the bigger picture um even though that's not going to be in the legis the details of the bigger picture we're talking about is not going to be in the legislation so can i ask a question uh, i found myself thinking the 10-year plan or the whatever you know how yes the vision plan not, right 10-year vision not a 30 it's not a 30-year plan right it's a 10-year right. <laughs> the vision plan I mean, to somehow tie this to uh, how this is manifesting itself as the tenure, hopefully not wait 10 years, but uh, that some of the issues that we're raising uh, need to be, uh, I'm not quite, I'm losing my ability to, but th that somehow to, to say this, this, this should not be done apart from that, but in, in coordination with uh, with, because that plan also calls, I believe, for accelerated peer involvement, et cetera, in the mental health system. It does, and I think, I think it, it also I there also we somehow acknowledge that connection. That that's this is a part of what we're asking the the, the Department of Health, Mental Health itself is asking to move forward. With. Yeah, well, uh, and so um, Katie might remember offhand more rapidly than I do, but the the um, the vision implementation council. Integration oh, Council. The Integration Council we authorized. The, right, and I believe the Department of Public Safety was, I hope, maybe maybe we could add them to that council if they're not. We have a lot of people on that council from all of a lot of different departments and it seems like they certainly, um, I mean, this, this should be something when we're talking about integration of mental health in the healthcare system. It in includes the standing committee, they should work collaboratively with, with, the, with the adult standing committee and the integration council. Yes, right. There you go. Any, 
And I think we heard something to the effect, and just to acknowledge, I mean, there's a lot going on. You know, we're operating within an emergency situation pandemic with people doing amazing work at state government to stand up various programs. And I think we had had a request, I don't know if it's public and formal, but that the possibility that we had charged the Integration Council, I believe it was, to have its first meeting in October. And they were saying, there is so much going on to do that right. We really would like to be able to defer that till January 1. I think that uh, right. I think we were gonna give some informal consent to that, which yeah. we need to remember to do. Yeah, because I think, I think, I, and again, they were saying, you want, us, you want to force us to do that, we'll do it, but it'll be a token it'll be meaningless and it won't be done right. So, but, I, yeah. but I think, but I think making some reference here is still in order. Mm -hmm. I think Peter, uh, Peter has his hand up again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just uh, questioning the November 1st date uh, by the time this all gets through that that's really not much time to do anything. So maybe we want to push that out to January or something. Um, yeah, that that's fine. Do people December, January, it is it, it in my thought, it wasn't give us the full report on what you've done. It's where it's what's your update. progress? I'd say what, what's your progress? Yeah, I'd love a. So I don't know. I think I, January one seems too late. I, I would hope that they'd be implementing things by then. Can we do November fifteenth? It's just a status okay. update. Have you have you had a chance? Have you to gotten start started, like please? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can think of another initiative we took that did have five million dollars <laughs> that we should have been asking for status updates every three months mm -hmm. because we found out later nothing had happened. And now we lost that money. Yeah, now we lost that money. That had to do with mental health. That had to do with su right. supporting mental health staff in the DAs with scholarship money. There's no hands up right now. We have two minutes left in our meeting time. We do? Yeah. 155, we're on the floor at two. What's the oh, next oh, step? Yeah. Will we Thank be emailed you. something? Yes. The next step is that okay. Katie will uh, help with redrafting our, you know, um, uh, memo component incorporating the discussion and with a draft of the um, of the very brief targeted um, language that will substitute be language for the budget substitute a language for the budget and um, as soon as we have drafts will circulate for you know what will need to be um, any any comment or you know big misses and so forth um, for pretty rapid turnaround since we need to be presenting the the amendment um, on the floor tomorrow afternoon. Or maybe to approps in the morning. Right. So approps in the morning. They will need to see it before we yeah, spring it on the floor. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but what what time do we meet again tomorrow? Is it at nine? Is that correct? That's a that's a joint yes that's a joint yes, hearing at nine with the Senate. And on that a whole is other specific, topic. That, yes, and that's focused on new language from the Department of Financial Regulation to supplement their emergency, their ability to do emergency um, rulemaking, having to do with uh, testing around COVID. And now they and I think from my point of view, uh, I appreciate their initiative around flu. Uh, because of, uh, I think if you if you haven't had a chance, do look at their. Ra I asked, I had asked them to give us a written rationale ahead of tomorrow morning's meeting, uh, because there's, and they mentioned in part that there may be a both a COVID and flu test merging that might become. And they want to make sure that we protect Vermont consumers from being uh, uh, billed for things where we have protected them from having to have any out of pocket costs. And you want us all there tomorrow at nine? If, if you can, I mean, obviously it's a committee meeting, it's a joint meeting, if you can be there. And it'll be nine, it's actually nine, scheduled nine to 10, 15, I put 10, 30, but nine to 10, 15, and we're gonna be primarily hearing from the Department of Financial Regulation. You know, Chair, it would be nice if you just said, we're all ordered to be there. I um, do that. You are all ordered to be there. Uh, 
Thank you. And some people will know what to do. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> and other people will probably rebel. I'm on live YouTube. What am I talking about? I better be careful here. <laughs> okay. I think that does it for today. Thank you again. Let me say, let me, I, after we got off yesterday, I wanted to very publicly thank Representative Donahue again for your leadership in organizing the witnesses that we had. This We had three days of testimony uh, and for also once again, taking the lead in organizing some of our thoughts where we offered thoughts and she reduced a lot of that to paper. Uh, and uh, so thank you. Uh, and Representative Donahue for your leadership on this. It's, it's tremendously invaluable, uh, tremendously valuable. Uh, and with that, I'd say, again, thank you to the whole committee uh, working as a team. Let's um, move forward. And please, when if there is a draft, to the degree possible, respond rapidly. You did, many of you, most of you did previously, and that, that seemed to work fine. And then we'll, uh, we'll reconvene at 9 tomorrow morning and be in touch. Okay. Thank you, Demis. We can go off YouTube live at this point.